Hi, and welcome to the Breakthrough Emotional Eating Podcast. My name is Kristen Jones, and thank you so much for joining me this week. So I'm just going to come out and tell you right away, straight up, this is going to seem like a shameless plug, and I'm going to tell you that straight up, that's what I'm doing. I am going to tell you that we are going to be talking today about journaling, and I'm not going to pretend, and I'm not going to act like, oh yeah, I didn't just... I didn't just publish a book, a uh, guided journal. I did. I did. Y'all, I'm really excited. I just published this last weekend a guided journal uh, for emotional eaters that I have been working on probably, hmm, I don't know, last month or so. And um, so I just, I, put it into KDP, which is uh, Kindle Direct Publishing, which is a, a branch of Amazon. And on Sunday morning, I got the little notification that, hey, you're live. And then I got my little link to, uh, to Amazon. Very exciting. And so I really wanted to today to talk about why journaling is so important. But what I want to talk about also is why journaling is important and that you don't need a guide like the one I created. Now, do I think you should buy it? Of course I do. But that's just that's just me. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be a good author if I didn't want you to buy my book. But it's not necessary. There are so many things that you can be journaling on to work on not only your emotional eating, but just work on your overall happiness with your life. And so I'm going to give you some ideas about things that you can journal on, things that you can you can can kind of ponder and why these things are so beneficial, why it's so important for you to be able to do this and how much it will in fact help you when it comes to just your overall happiness and your overall mental health. Um, and I think that that is, you know, obviously mental health is really, really important um, overall, but it's really important right now because I think we are all in a place where um, people's mental health is just, you know, I think everybody wants to be as mentally healthy as they possibly can be. So that is you know, that's, I think that's, I think that's a huge, it's a huge component. Depression is a huge issue for many people. And so I think it's really important to recognize if there are ways that you can in your own life right now, without having to go buy anything or having to go, you know, do a course or read a book or any of those things that you can start working on how you feel about yourself and the happiness and joy in your life. Why not? Why not? Just do it. All it takes is a couple pieces of paper. So we're going to talk about the benefits of daily journaling and what that looks like and how you can go about doing it. And then also how it can be impactful when it comes to emotional eating and addressing issues with emotional eating and how it can help you uncover the issues that you may have with emotional eating. So whether or not you recognize and designate yourself as an emotional eater or not, this type, this podcast will be really, really helpful for you because it's going to give you some really good guidelines and things that you can use to help yourself. So without further ado, we are going to talk about, again, first off, we're going to go through just the overall benefits of, of, of journaling and why it is so important. I'm going to tell you just something that is not mentioned in my, uh, in my, in my, in the literature that I, um, that I looked up, but it's something that I know is really important because it's something that I studied as, um, as a teacher. And so one of the things that I know is when we are have whether, whether this was a study, sorry, whether this was a study um, for me of my, uh, my students when I was um, a, a special ed teacher or whether it was my study when I was um, learning to be a life coach. One of the things that I learned was that when we have a lot of things going on in our lives and we are trying to do all sorts of, of different things, um, whether it be working on a goal, whether it just be living our lives, we have, you know, everybody's busy, everybody has lots going on. When we have a cluttered mind, we can't focus in on the important priorities that we really need to be focusing in on. And so the, the writing and journaling things and getting things down on paper is a great way of emptying out your brain and allowing your brain to kind of like 
kind of take a break because it's working really hard when it has all those thoughts going on inside. And one of the things I think you might, you might notice, and I know I do. So when I'm worrying about something and I keep thinking about it, it's like the problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it hasn't changed. It's still the same problem, but in my mind, it is exponentially just like exploded and it's reproduced and it's replicated. And it's like, you know, it's like the, it's like the, um, like the Miss Pac-Man or the Pac-Mans, you know, like they just start reproducing each other in themselves. And all of a sudden you have all these thoughts. And that's essentially what happens with our thoughts. When we have too many thoughts in our head and we can't clean, you know, kind of clear our, clear our minds. It's those thoughts keep banging into each other and they just start replicating and they start just, you know, exposing themselves and, 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 and reproducing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and taking up more space. And then we feel more overwhelmed and things just then seem to take on a mind of their own. So I know that journaling gets ideas out of your head, takes them from your brain, puts them on paper and gives your brain a break. It allows it to kind of like, whew, just take a breath and allow it to relax. And, and then you can kind of go from there when it comes to reevaluating the things that you're thinking about. So that was the first thing. I wanted to make sure that you all knew that because it wasn't something that was officially in the, uh, in the information that I had, that I had, uh, had uh, made notes on when it came to this podcast, but it's something that I knew was really important. So first thing is it improves overall mental health. Um, journaling has, has, in, has had studies done where people who have a tendency to be depressed uh, and they fall into depressive states pretty easily when they were journaling on a regular basis and getting their thoughts down and really being able to look at their thoughts, they were able to be more realistic and more factual about their, um, about their realities of their life. And they weren't so much making up stories and it wasn't so much these problems just seemed to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm going to refer to a previous podcast. I don't know what the number is off the top of my head, but I know that it's the podcast is, is about stories and facts and how we make up, oftentimes our brain makes up stories and we start thinking that these stories are true. And in fact, they are fabrications that our brain has made up. We need to be dealing in facts. But if for this case, I want you to think about how your brain, you, we need to give our brain a break and how we, we can deal with that is we give our brain a break by dealing with the facts of what's really going on. So when we write things down, we write down the things and then we, and then we look at them and we determine what, you know, where are the facts, where are the things, the realities of what's really going on and not all the emotional stuff. So writing everything down can really, really help people who have a tendency to be depressed, who have a tendency to be move, move towards depression. It alleviates some anxiety it can, again, reduce stress and reduce the tendency towards leaning towards a depressive state. And again, it allows you to be able to look at your thoughts, look at what you're thinking, and then start to manage those thoughts and manage them in a way that will actually work for your life. Second thing is it increases your self-awareness. When we have to look at ourselves and we have to examine what our behaviors are, what our thoughts are, what are the things that we're doing. It makes us much more aware. And I will tell you, because this is the honest truth. There are times that you probably have said things inside your head and then you write them down and you read it and you, and you laugh because it's so ridiculous. Like you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I was really thinking that. Sometimes it takes us that self-awareness to recognize like, oh, wow, that's, I'm so off on that. Like, that's really kind of silly. Why would I ever think that? But if it's a thought in your head, it absolutely feels like it's 1000% real. But when we write it down, it takes a very different tone and we can kind of see it and be, and be more realistic and be more self-aware of like, oh, I think that's just my brain doing its thing. So increasing the self-awareness by writing things down, by writing down our thoughts, writing down our feelings, writing down things that have happened, writing down what has transpired in our day can be really, really helpful. It also allows you to write things down and be able to retain that information. So improving your memory, 
by, you know, significant things that happen, you write them down, you tell a story about them, or you tell the facts of what happened. And then you can recall those, those pieces of information. You can look back into your journal and decide, okay, let me go back and take a look at what actually happened there. It can really improve your ability to be able to recall pieces of information. It also, journaling can also increase a person's creativity because it can stimulate your imagination and your thought process and allow you to um, really engage in, the, in a daily practice of writing. And writing really is something that if we don't do it very often, it's like any other kind of muscle, it kind of atrophies. And so we want your brain is, you know, you're, it's like, it's like using your brain is like muscle memory. You want to, you know, writing is must is using muscles, that muscle memory, you've got to have that. So you want to actually be able to give yourself the practice of writing every day. And really, although I won't say 100% you have to always do it by hand. Some people do feel more comfortable. It is really important to, to try to get that, that thought process down with the actual act of physically you know, moving your hand and doing the actual writing. But if for some you know, physical, you have a physical limitation, you absolutely can, can type out whatever, whatever the thoughts are in your head, still gonna address you know, the mental health and the self-awareness and the better memory. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm going to turn that off. Um, so you can really make sure that, again, increased creativity, increased imagination. So many of us don't really ever write. We just, we type stuff, but we don't actually write and use that creativity of thought. So it gives you another opportunity to do that. It also can help you with your communication skills. So I don't know if about anybody else, but I know sometimes I am not always the best communicator. And uh, especially when it's something that's uncomfortable to me and I'm afraid how it's going to be received, journaling about it and getting it down on paper and actually giving myself almost a script and, and some guidelines and some direction as to how I want to formulate a response to a person can be super, super helpful. So that actually, and it can be because what it allows you to do is to get your thoughts down and then you are feeling more at ease. You feel more um, like you've really thought things through and you can feel like you have a better control over the things that you're going to say. And so again, writing things down, journaling thoughts, journaling feelings, especially if we're going to have a, a conversation with somebody that might not be all that easy, we can absolutely journal about it, get our thoughts down, and then be able to convey those thoughts in a much different way because we've had time to think about it. So those are kind of the, some of the, the, valuable, the valuable reasons why journaling and, and the, the, the actual act of writing is so important um, and why it's so important for, for everyone's you know, mental health and emotional health and, um, and all those things translate into your physical health. So having that outlet is so, so very important. But for the, you know, for our purposes here, how does that journaling actually impact your emotional eating and your addressing of your emotional eating? So, and this is where it's important to remember that emotional eating can happen anytime. It can happen because of anything. Remember, it's never about the food. Your eating, your your emotional eating is not about food. It's always about unexpressed emotions. It's about how you're feeling, about how you're feeling about yourself, how you're feeling about other people, how you're feeling about others and not expressing it, how you're feeling about yourself and not expressing it, or you're expressing it in an incredibly negative way towards yourself. All of those things kind of come together. And so it's really important that we recognize that those that journaling is is absolutely an active part of recovery and management of emotional eating because many people have a really hard time verbalizing how they feel and that's why that's why they emotionally eat because they can't verbalize how they're feeling they can't verbalize what they're thinking and they can't verbalize you know, if, if something someone said was, was upsetting to them or that, you know, a, a discussion or a conversation with another person was challenging for them. 
they, if they can't do that, if they can't do the, com the communication, journaling is a great way to, again, get those ideas down first and be able to be able to formulate a plan for how you're going to address them with someone. But when it comes to not being guided in your, in your journaling, and when I say guided, just for purposes um, here, when I say a guided, guided in your journaling, that would mean that you would receive a maybe a different prompt. Some journals have the same prompts. They have the same like series of prompts. Maybe they have you fill some things in during the during you know in the beginning of your of your journal time. They have you write some things down, and then they'll have a question. They'll ask you a question. They'll you know have you a question to address or ask you a question. That is a guided journal, meaning that you are given instructions about what you need to talk about, what you need to write down, what you need to think about, and then write down. And that's fine. Those are great. And, the, and, and that's the type of, that actually is the type of journal that I just created. But, and, as, and as, as nice as those are, because they give you talking points, they give you things that you can address. I wouldn't sleep on a journal, an opportunity just to journal every day about what you're thinking about anything in your life. But more specifically, what are some emotions and some thoughts that you're having that are causing you to feel like you need to eat in order to either soothe them or, you know, you know, there's, a, there's an emotion. So you're feeling like, oh, I need to go in this direction. I want to make sure I want to eat something, but I don't want to eat something. So now let me journal about what transpired. Let me recap what's happened, what the incident was, what my thoughts are, how I'm feeling, what actions I want to take. What are the results that I feel like I'm getting right now? All of those things. We can journal about that. And we don't need any kind of, of, of prompt. We don't need anybody to ask us a question. We can just know, oh, this is something like I felt like eating when I wasn't really hungry. That's a reason to journal. That's absolutely a reason to journal. And just replay what happened. Why, am I, why do I think I'm feeling that way? And not getting upset with yourself, but just coming from a place of curiosity. Why am I feeling that way? What is this really all about? And a lot of times you'll get the answer as you start to write things out. So going in that direction of, of not having a guide, but just you being your own guide is incredibly powerful. And what it allows you to do, it allows you to be able to have a record of what are the situations, what are the circumstances that caused you to want to overeat? What are the emotions that you're having? You want to write those down. You want to start journaling about those things because what's going to happen is you're going to start to uncover things because your brain is having that information kind of taken away and put down on paper. So suddenly your brain's become more clear. Then you can really start tapping into how you're really feeling. So that can be incredibly powerful. Again, it can give people an opportunity to be able to write their emotions down, write their, what, you know, what kind of they, what they think might've triggered them to want to eat. And then not only formulate a plan for next time, but how do I want to address it right now? What are the things that I want to start doing? And then next time it happens, because it's going to happen again, how do I want to be prepared for that? So incredibly, and, and that is best done when there is no prompt, when it's just you remembering. Okay, but but sometimes we don't want to. We 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 it it feels too painful. It feels too hard. But all we want to do is just get the basics down. What are the patterns that I'm seeing? What are the things that I'm doing day after day that aren't serving my life? And how can I start writing that stuff down? And then being able to pay attention to it and be like, you want to be like a detective. What do I need to start looking at? What are the things that I need to start addressing? So you. Once you have established like what the emotions are, what the what the 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 triggering events are, I really don't like the word trigger, but the you know the events that occur prior to you wanting to emotional eat emotionally eat. Once you've gotten those, then you can start to formulate a plan for how am I going to deal with this? Like I know it's going to happen, so how do I want to deal with it the first few times it happens? How do I want to talk to myself? What are the actual words I want to say to myself? Have them written down. Have them written down, have them like a little script in your purse that when you start to feel that way, you pull that out. That's going to allow you to be able to calm down. It's going to allow you to be able to reduce your stress, reduce your overwhelm, and then deal with the actual situation and uncover what may be 
the thing that causes you to emotionally eat. You may actually get to that. So again, having that opportunity to be able to figure those things out is super important. Also, when you're in those moments, how do I want to act? How do I want to respond when I start feeling this way? Do I want to start, you know, deep breathing? Do I want to, you know, step aside and, and, you know, do a little yoga stretch? I mean, what is it that I want to do to allow myself? What do I want to just sit? Do I just want to feel my feelings? What do I need to do in order to take that information and then use it in a way that's going to work, that's going to work for my life. And that's going to help improve my life. Um, Another thing, another way that journaling helps with emotional eating is it can allow you to kind of track and write down, like, what are some of the eating habits and some of the times of the day that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing? I'm not really feeling myself. And so maybe I'm going off and I'm doing things that aren't serving me, that aren't, that aren't improving my life. And then what do I want to do in order to fix those things? But we don't know unless we have it written down. I will give you an example. I think that this is where writing is, is so powerful. Like I had, I don't even know how many things I wanted to do today, but I knew I had at least four pretty major things that I wanted to at least touch on and get a little bit of, a little bit of, of work done on. If I hadn't written them down and really had an idea about why, I, why I wanted to work on them, why they were important and, and then what they were and, and when in the day I wanted to do them. I would have been just like squirrel, squirrel all over the place, you know, going online, doing whatever. I would not have been able to stay focused if I hadn't written that down, had it in my journal, had my journal open. That's the page that's going to refer to all the things I want to do. So it really, it actually will reduce anxiety when you write something down, when you write things down that you're concerned about, that you're worried about, it allows your brain to be able to take a break and not be so concerned about what's coming next because it knows it's already written down. That means it's true. It means it's going to happen. So it, it just allows other aspects of your brain and other aspects of your, of your life to be able to kind of settle in and calm down. Um, and the, the, other, the other thing is it's important to recognize what are foods, what are things that you're eating that aren't really working for you. Even though you may like them, they may they might not be working. They might not be working for your mood. They might not be working for your energy level. They might not be working for what your long-term goals are. And if you can journal about that and you can write that stuff down, then two, three months from now, when you're like, mm, I don't know if I should get rid of that thing. I don't know if I should still be eating that. You can go back in your journal and you can start looking through and realizing, oh yeah, that's right. I wrote that down. Now I can use that information because now I have some data. Now I have some facts that I can now use. And it's not just me being emotional. It's me looking at the facts and what do I need to do to put myself in the best possible position? So again, there's a lot of ways that you can journal. You can journal with a, with a guide. You can journal with a daily prompt with any variety of prompts, it doesn't matter how many times you want to, you want to write each, you know, day, week, or month, or, you know, years, but it's deciding, is this something that I think is going to be beneficial to me? And I hope that I've presented that, why it is beneficial to you, but also do I want to carve out the time to make that happen? And how am I going to help other people be able to do that as well? How am I going to help support other people when they feel like they want to journal? And maybe, you know, maybe that's not necessarily possible for them in those moments. And so we, we, we want to look at our lives and realize, okay, if I'm going to be doing this thing that's, that's going to improve my life. Maybe I want to find out if some other people want to do it. And then we can all do it together and support each other and really encourage each other to continue to move forward and do these types of writing exercises because they're so, so valuable to just, again, clearing the mind, giving yourself some space, giving yourself that ability to be able to identify what's working in your life, what's not working in your life, and how do we go about changing those things and what we can we do. And it's amazing how when we write stuff down, it's kind of a commitment that we're actually going to do something about it. And that can be really powerful as well. So you have a couple of options moving forward when it comes to, to journaling. You 100% can, and I would strongly recommend that anyone who is interested in managing and addressing 
and then therefore managing their emotional eating, would really start to consider to have a journal, a blank journal, lines, no lines, you decide if you like lines or not, but, and something just to get some thoughts down out of your head throughout your day. So does that mean that you have to carry it with you? Yeah, you might want to carry it with you. Maybe you have one that goes in your bag and one that you keep at home. But just when you get to those places where you feel like, oh God, a snack would be really good right now. And you know, you don't need a snack. You pull your journal out and you're like, okay, so what am I really thinking right now? What is really going on? What do I really want? Because it's really not that food. It's not, you know, it's not that. It's something else. So uncovering what that is and then being able to deal with that and address that issue. So that's your first option is, is to be able to ask yourself those questions. And again, I think a great way to do, uh, of doing that is when you're in those moments where you're feeling like, oh, you know, I really, I really want to, to, I really want a snack right now. I really want to, you know, I'm feeling like I want to go into my meal and I really want to overeat. It's like, take it just 30 seconds to a minute and just try to get some ideas down on paper. Try to get that journaling down. It doesn't have to be anything formal. It doesn't have to be a certain length of time. It doesn't have to be a certain amount of pages. It just is getting your thoughts down and just giving yourself that avenue and that, that, that place that you can do that kind of thing and get those thoughts down on paper. Now, if it's something that you want more direction and there's more of a long-term goal that you have going on and you want those very specific structured prompts that you want to be to be writing about, you absolutely, there are so many, so many, not as many as I thought, but there were so many um, journals on, it, you know, on Amazon, on KDP, all sorts of places that you can access journals that have on various topics, you know, anti, you know, an, anti-anxiety, um, sleep, pr you know, promoting uh, good sleep, um, you know, how to increase your energy, how to lose weight, how to, you know, manage your emotional eating, all of those things. There's so many, so many things that you can, um, that you can look at for in a journal and those journals can be guided. A guided journal is a journal that has prompts in it that kind of guides you through what you're supposed to be writing about. Uh, and they can be very, very powerful as well. And I find them, I really like guided journals. And that's one of the reasons why I created one for emotional eaters, because I just think that, that there's a way that we can be looking at how we feel about ourselves, what we think about ourselves, what we think and say about ourselves to ourselves, and then how that impacts our relationship with food, because our relationship with food is very much our relationship with ourselves. So we need to make sure that we're in a good place when it comes to our relationship with ourselves. And that will in turn really blossom and allow the, your relationship with food to be a healthy one and one where you are able to be in control of what you're doing and feel really good about the direction that your life is going in. So again, you have two options now. Here comes my second shameless plug. So the the um, journal that I wrote is called um, "It's Not About Food," and that's one of our very very common and uh, I'm not saying famous, but it's just a common saying in uh, the Breakthrough Membership that it's not about food. And so that's the name of the journal. It's not about food. It's, it's a 90 day journal for emotional eaters. It is available on. Uh, Amazon. I know initially it was only available on the link that I sent out. Um, and I will be able to add that to not only to the um, this Facebook post, but also in the show notes for this podcast. But it um, also can, it, I think it just takes them a little bit of time to be able to put it on Amazon. So it should be available to everybody now. So that is available. But also, I mean, really and truly a spiral notebook, go to the 99 cent store. Where I don't even know. Y'all don't get me started on the whole controversy of the 99 cent store and Dollar General, which is a totally different thing. So remember, you can always get a journal less than a dollar fifty. Again, just a you know certain number of pages, and just start journaling. Just start writing about what it is, how you're feeling, what you're thinking, you know, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, the actions that you're taking. Are they working for your life? Are they getting you the results that you want? And just Go from there. Just start. Just start putting things down on paper, and just clearing your mind and allowing yourself to be really, really present wherever you are, and just 
get your thoughts, get your feelings down on paper can be incredibly powerful. So again, you have the options of, of going a guided route or going the traditional, just getting out the pencil and paper and start writing. But I tell you, your life will change considerably when you start doing that. So I hope that this podcast, as I hope all my podcasts, is helpful, gave you something to think about, gave you a, a, a direction for you to go in. And um, I hope that you find the style of journal that works for you. And so I will see you all. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you all next week on the podcast. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.